Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Boston Observatory at Berkeley. Please take a moment to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices and to locate the exits closest to you. Apart from the main entrance, we also have an exit located across the stage. Please note that all flash photography and unauthorized videography are prohibited. Thank you for your cooperation, and we hope you enjoy the show. I wanted to talk to you, you know, we are old friends. 
here. And, uh, I have the two, my teachers here with me, both Marcus and Maestro Itran as well. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about the pieces, and I wanted to talk to you about the program, because this program that uh, I picked, it is very meaningful because it is the result of a long learning process that I had, and a long, uh, very enjoyable process that I'm still having of learning to discover and to enjoy every aspect of the culture that is my country, that is Mexico. And I wanted to share that, this with you, I wanted to share this with you because every part of the culture that I'm learning, every part of the things that I'm um, discovering of Mexico is just so amazing. And I wanted to share, and I wanted to, all of you to be as excited as I am uh, for being part of, of this um, music world and also make Mexico be part of your music world as well. Hopefully after this recital you will be curious enough to look for more of those composers um, that are from other countries, not only from Mexico, from other countries, but you know Mexico. More, <laughs> more there. And uh, <laughs> well, the first, uh, today we're gonna hear uh, four different composers from different parts of the history of Mexico and from different, uh, this, this recital is the sound of Mexico because each composer that I pick today, it's a unique part of that sound. The first composer that we are going to hear today is Julian Carrillo. Julian Carrillo is a composer from a very small town in San Luis Potosí called Agualulco that later uh, in his honor they call it Agualulco of the 13th sound, or Agualulco del Sonido 13. He was an amazing violinist. Violinist, conductor, theorist, scientist. You know, at that time, everybody, like the big ones, needed to be everything uh, because they didn't have TV or anything that we have right now. Um, <laughs> and, and he was an amazing, an amazing, very knowledgeable man. Uh, he is mostly known by, by his theory, the, the 13th sound. But that basically, it's like a microtonal theory that he divided each, uh, each tone in 16 equal steps. And he called it the 13th sound because on, on the day that he uh, made the theory, it was the 13th day of a month that I don't remember, but I should have remembered. But you know, it's, you know that's, that's the case, right? Uh, he wrote several pieces, symphonic pieces. He worked uh, in Mexico, in Germany, in France, in in New York, in Massachusetts, in a lot of parts of the world. He was very known uh, when he was alive. Uh, thank, uh, first, before I forget, because sometimes I tend to forget things, I want to thank Marcus, and I want to thank Maestro Vitran, and also, if in the live stream it's, it's Maestro Armando Merino, my, the, he has the same master as me, uh, because it, thanks to them, uh, I was able to get this music. Now, going back to Julian Carrillo. So Julian Carrillo did a lot of, a lot of things. And he wrote three pieces for violin solo. His three sonatas for solo violin. The first one is the one that we are here today. It's, an, it's in E minor. It's a sonata, primera sonata in E menor. The second one is in D minor. And the third one is very interesting because it reflects his later peer, uh, like period, yeah, period, on where he was um, more into the microtone situation with the 13th sound theory. The first day, the first sonata, this one, as the rest of them, are dedicated to both Bach and Paganini. So you would, you guys will hear like a bunch of standard techniques, and the first movement it's an adagio, the second movement is a fugue, and the third movement it's kind of a big, very big cadence of the fugue. So, without further ado, I'm here to present you the first sonata by Julian Carrillo. I hope you guys enjoy.
piece, it's um, of a women composer in Mexico. And you know that women composer? Well, it's not good news that it's not being, that they're not played enough as they, as they should. And in, in countries where it's not Europe, you know, it's even, even less. Uh, but the, the women in Mexico have done incredible history. It's just mind blowing how much uh, things have given to the culture in, in our country. Uh, because, for example, um, Guadalupe Olmedo, one of the women composers and artists that Mexico had the, the fortune to, to be part of her, um, she wrote the first string quartet uh, written after the Mexican independence, and it was a woman. Uh, I, I could go on, on, on and on and on about countless things that women have done in Mexico. And uh, the one that I'm going to play, it's a 20th century woman that died pretty recently in 20, uh, 2014. Uh, she's from Oaxaca. It's a very beautiful town. Very beautiful town. Jacob Malachi, my roommates, already know that place because um, there's there has been a couple of gifts, including some insects to it, uh, that I've given to them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she was from Oaxaca. Uh, her name was Rosa Gurayev. And she was an amazing composer. Uh, Professor Saul Vitran had the opportunity to work with her, and I'm very thankful for him uh, because he provided uh, me with the manuscript of, of this piece that we are uh, about to hear, we're about to hear this piece. It is just an amazing sonata. Three movements, attack all of them, it feels like one piece. It is, it is, oh yeah, obviously like fast, this is all fast. But it is, it, is, it is a great piece, it is an amazing performance, of, of, I mean, a display, an amazing display of, of talented, of how intricate a composition can be and how beautiful as well can be. And in the, uh, Rosa um, li lived in a time where um, the, the, the music needed to be very, very modern. If it was not very, very modern, well, it was maybe not such a good music or it was not considered such. But she, according to Professor Vitran, she was a, a very romantic woman on her style, and, very, and she managed to mix both styles, the romantic one and the more contemporary, more, the, uh, more experimental like language in, his, in her music. This sonata specifically that we are gonna play today, Miles and I, uh, was premiered by Professor Vitran. And it's, it's just so great, and it makes me very sad that it's not being played more often. The premiere was done in 19, let me check the part, if nobody's looking at me moving my foot right now. It was in, hold on, hold on, 1978. And probably has been played maybe like two or three times. Nobody's looking at me, we'll forget about the first one. So, so it, this is some sort of a, a, an homage, and I am very proud, very, very proud to be playing this amazing piece with Miles. Thank you, Miles, by the way. <laughs> and I'm very, very proud to share with all of you, the people on the live stream as well. Uh, so let's hear the sonata for violin and piano by Rosa Gurayev.
program, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the next one is a suite. You guys know that a suite is a set of dances. And in Mexico, dance is well, number one priority besides tacos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and this composer, Glas Galindo, born in Jalisco, the place where the mariachi is, the place, oh my God, where, where, where a lot of amazing things happen. Almost as great as Durango, as one town. But um, the, this place, uh, uh, so Glas Galindo, born in a, in a town where he only knew mariachi music. He only knew this traditional dance music, well, the San Mariachi, he, he knew the sones, and a lot of different dances that in his hometown they used to play and, and dance. So he learned music first by ear, and, and he became part of a choir, and so on and so on. But then he decided to study music professionally once he heard a, 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 a rehearsal that was done by two of the most amazing, uh, most iconic Mexican composers, which were um, Carlos Chavez and Silvestre Revueltas. And Silvestre Revueltas from my hometown, which is awesome. But uh, when he saw that, he, uh, he thought to himself, this is what I'm gonna dedicate myself. So he became part of this movement called nationalism, Mexican nationalism, and his music is basically that. It sounds Mexico. This program is going to end today with this piece, and with this piece, flavor of Mexico. So I will hope that you guys enjoy it, and I, I'm very thankful again to Marcus, to Professor Saul, to Professor Armando Merino on the on the live stream, to Miles, to all of you, my friends, and to my family and my friends in Mexico as well, for joining me today in this recital. I hope that once you get out of these doors, you will be more inclined to look more music besides the standard repertoire and to be able to enjoy all of all the other genres of this amazing art of music. So this is Sweet para violin and piano, or Sweet for violin and piano, you know the translation, not very hard, um, <laughs> by Glass Valley. I hope you guys enjoy. Basically, it's gonna transport you to these Mayan ruins in this. Just use your imagination. <laughs> just use your imagination. And the third one is a song, un song huasteco, which is even more of a dance. And the third one, you will think that I'm a mariachi and that Miles is also mariachi here. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Now, please clap again. <laughs>
Queens in Mexico. So we have a gift. Miles and I have a gift from you, for all of you. So please sit down and yeah. enjoy a piece by a composer from my hometown. Oh, no, 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 no. You should see this place. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful place. You should all come and visit one time. You are all welcome to my house. I mean, in groups because it's impossible to fit all of you in one house. But <laughs> this composer, this composer, it's so important in the history of Mexico. So important. He is recognized as the Chopin of Mexico. He's recognized as one of the most important figures of the end of the 19th century. He's so amazing. He was the one, the first one that wrote the first symphony in Mexico in the whole country. Imagine just how big is this? It's like the most important, one of the most important things in the history of classical music. The, the symphony, by the way, did not play, so very sad there. But here, me and, and Miles and, and all of you are gonna join and hear one of these pieces that it was published after he died. Uh, and well, he was living in a time where in Mexico was some political stuff happening, the Mexican Revolution. So he was part of the old regime, and when the new regime they swipe off everything that was related to the old regime. So all of his music, and right now still, some of it is still lost. But Professor Armando Merino, that is watching me in the live, hello, um, he has done an amazing, an amazing job collecting and, and compiling and discovering and arranging a, 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 an amazing amount of music by Ricardo Castro. And I'm very thankful because this piece is just so, so, so beautiful. And it's a great gift to give to all of you guys. Uh, this piece is called Melodia, which the translation is also pretty easy, Melody. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. This is Melodia by Ricardo Castro.
It's a piece, because the colors and the sound of Mexico cannot be completed without a song. A song that is meant to be danced. So Miles, either you dance or you join us on the audience. Uh, <laughs> this piece, this piece, uh, means to me a lot. I didn't remember it until my friend Daniel Mesa, who is an amazing wind player here. He's not here, but he, he will watch it, so in the future, hello. Um, this piece, when I was little, my grandma that has a group that had she passed away. She had a group of, of musicians. She played the mandolin, and her other two friends used to play the guitar and the, the bass. And the Los Alegres de Doña Clementina, which was the name of the group, played this amazing song, and it's so fun. It's so fun. I remember being a little kid, just little, a man, just imagine, just maybe just a little bit shorter, because I didn't go so much, but just a little bit shorter, and just dancing this piece with my mom and my grandma playing the, the mandolin. It means a lot, it means a lot, and you know, with this, oh, now, now it's the last thing, I promise. With this, I conclude this piece is called Jesusita en Chihuahua, which is the easiest translation possible, because Jesusita en Chihuahua translates Jesusita in Chihuahua. So, I hope you guys enjoy this, very short, just, just uh, like, like, uh, like the chair. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoy this piece. Uh, thank you again for everybody to come, uh, and the, in the exit, uh, there is some treats for us. I thank you for all of you to, to have come to my recital. If you're online, we'll find some treats in your house. Uh, <laughs>